guys, it's Kelly here and I am back with another video for Create a Smile. I'm going to be using um, Hypnotize, Monster Party, and um, A Time to Say Thanks, just the sentiment portion of it for today's card. So I really wanted to create a um, Halloween card, but I'm not a real big advocate of buying holiday sets because I just don't make enough holiday cards for me to justify the expense. So if I want to send something to someone, I try to uh, just use what I already have. So as you can see, those those sets are pretty much everyday sets, and um, I'm just going to transform it into a Halloween card with my color palette and um, by getting a little um, creative with my <laughs> sentiment. So here I'm just rubbing on some uh, ripe persimmon distress ink for my background, and I'm going to use some picked raspberry. I view like uh, bright uh, oranges, bright purples, neon greens as like Halloween colors, but um, I needed that pink to blend into my purple. I didn't want to just go orange to purple because I figured it would be pretty muddy and I wanted it to be a bright background. So I'm using this Wilted Violet, which is one of the new Tim Holtz Distress colors. And I am like, I don't even like purple. I mean, isn't that hysterical? And I am like so in love with this color. Um, it's hard to tell in the video, but it's like electric purple. It's so, I mean, it's just so vivid. And you know I love bright colors. So here I'm just rubbing them on. And the last color I'm going to use is Black Soot. Don't mind the uh, glitter on my ink pad there. Um, I had a crafty spill some time ago. It doesn't. I don't really stamp with my Distress Ink ink pads, and it doesn't affect how my ink uh, gets picked up on my ink blender. So I'm fine with that. So here's a finished background. Um, I did have to go kind of heavy, and I don't know if it's just because I just bought those mini blending tools, um, but it took me a while to get the color intensity that I wanted. I'm using my Misty to stamp the background. Um, large backgrounds can be kind of difficult to stamp. Um, and even using the Misty, it was. So I wanted to be able to stamp it a second time if I wanted to. And I'm just going to be using some uh, black ink, black dye ink from W plus 9. Um, and I'm going to stamp it down. Now you're going to see, after I stamp it down the first time, I did not get good coverage in a lot of areas. It just didn't work out for me. The other thing that didn't work out for me was I couldn't get the stamp all the way down into the corner. So here I'm like, I'm CPR in that thing. I'm bringing it back to life. And instead of peeling it off, I decided to flip it over because normally when I stamp um, large backgrounds, I stamp them with the paper on top of my stamp. So I decided to try that, and that actually worked really well for me. So if you're doing that, use your Misty, but then leave that piece of paper stuck to your stamp so you can go over all the areas. So now I'm going to switch it up. We're stamping down our little monster in uh, Memento Tuxedo Black Ink because it's Copic friendly. And I'm just going to do some fairly quick Copic coloring. Um, I wanted to make him green with all the... Um, orange, pink, purple in my background. I thought that making him green would make him really pop off the page. So I'm just going to lay down um, a single coat of my lightest color. The way the stamp, um, like the circles come out, is to the right. So I wanted to do my shading so that it was on the left because I felt like that would look more natural. So I'm. Um, it would be darker where his horns are and then on that left-hand side of his body and underneath his feet. Um, and then I also wanted to give him a little bit of dimension, so I added some shading next to his eye and his mouth. His hand is closed over, so the shading would be um, behind his uh, the outside of his hand. Does that make sense? I feel like that makes sense. And then I switched up my... Um, I switched up my uh, green color combination because I wanted the, um, I'm using yellow greens, but I wanted them to be more blue based um, and less like fall colors, um, less olivey, I guess is the term. So my darkest color is actually a green. Um, the YG06 and the G05 actually blend really well together because the YG06 does seem to have more blue in it. So I'm just doing, um, you know, lightest to darkest, darkest to lightest. I'm using um, feathering to blend my colors. That's usually how I, I do that. And, um, you know, just hitting all those areas so they start to blend in together really nicely. 
and I forgot the geo five, so I had to on the right hand side of the horn, so I had to go back and add that in, and then uh, back to the YGO three, and I did um, go back in with the lightest color, which was YGO one, but I didn't cover the whole thing. I just used it um, as much as I needed to to blend into those darker colors, but I left the right hand side with just the one layer. So then from here, I really felt like, um, I felt like he was cute, but uh, I wanted him to have some texture. So I decided I was going to go and draw in some little, um, like, scales. So I'm going in with my lightest color first, and you're not going to see this on the majority of him, but the part that only has one layer of um, YGO1, you will be able to see those little half moons. Um, and I know it's hard to tell that's what I'm doing right now, but it'll get easier as the colors get darker. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to end up using all of um, the colors just because I really wanted to, to play up that texture. And dependent upon where the um, scales fall in the shading, you'll be able to see, you know, the YG03 on top of the YG01, but you won't be able to see the YG03 on top of the YG06. So um, I added more scales to the top than I did um, to the bottom and right hand side. Uh, and that's just, you know, for some variation. I think in the end it ended up coming out really cute. So don't be afraid to try something like this where, um, you know, you try adding texture just with your coloring. Fur, you know, fur works the same way um, to do like, you know, shorter little strokes. I just thought that this was cute because he's a little monster. He's a scaly little monster. And then um, after I'm done with this, I do go back through and um, just kind of blend them into each other so it doesn't just look like a weird, you know, C or whatever on top of my monster. Um, I decided I wanted to make his um, horns and his nails and mouth purple to tie in the purple from the card. So I went with some violets, and this is just really quick um, shading. My only little tip here is when you're doing the mouth, you want to give it some depth. So it would be lightest where it's closest to the mouth. So when I was coloring it, I left like a light colored ring um, around the very outside of his mouth. And then, <clears throat> excuse me, um... I added in the uh, V, I think it was 12 is what I ended up using, um, to the center, but I still left that sliver, and then I'm going to leave another sliver of the 12 to add in my Y04, and that just helps to give um, his mouth some dimension so it's not just completely flat. And then just like I did before, I'll use all my, um, I'll work in reverse from darkest to lightest to blend everything together. Once that was done, I felt like his eyeball looked a little flat. So I went in with some C1 just to shade the left-hand side of it. And this isn't anything that's a huge deal, but it, you know, every little bit helps kind of thing. So I outlined my image with my Copic Multiliner. Um, and especially when you're doing something with a black background like I did, like a true black background, uh, you want to make sure that your blacks match. So um, even though I do it with every card, even if I didn't, I probably would have done it with this one. And then I'm just adding some white gel pen dots um, to the sides of his face, down into his cheeks where Christine has already drawn the black ones. And that's just for a little bit of interest. And um, I did add it to the center of his eyeball and his teeth as well. After that, I fussy cut him out. And then I'm going to take a, the Memento Tuxedo Black Marker and just go around the edges so that everything looks clean. And here I'm, I am decided to emboss my sentiment. So I'm just making sure that that distressing background is dry. Um, it, I've, I've had it in the past where I've forgotten to do that, and it was a complete disaster because um, you can emboss with distressing. So um, if it's not completely dry, it will stick to everything. For the sentiment, I wanted to use, um, it says have a colorful day, but I, this is a Halloween card, so I wanted to say have a monstrous day. I also toyed with scary. I thought monstrous was cuter. So here I just used scotch tape to mask off the part of the sentiment, the sentiment that I didn't want to use. And then I removed that after I've laid down, um, inked it up with Versamark. And then it just stamps the part uh, that you left uncovered. 
So nice little trick so you don't have to, like that stamp is pretty intricate. I couldn't have cut it apart if I wanted to. So I just went ahead and heat set that. And then I did the same thing for the monstrous and the day. Um, I just masked it with scotch tape and then went, you know, and uh, matched, masked it with scotch tape and then um, just inked up portions of it with Versamark. That was a really crazy sentence. Anyway, um, so I popped him up on some foam tape and then I don't know what happened when I was trimming my card panel. It's like not even even at all, like not even a smidge. It doesn't even make sense on my card base. So I made sure my top and sides were even, and then I just went in with my trimmer and trimmed off the bottom. I wanted to fill in that little bit of space between him and the sentiment, and so I used some uh, clear sequins from Pretty Pink Posh to do that. And then, of course, you know, monsters should be shiny and sparkly because they're monsters that came out of my craft room, so I had to add some Winkastella. And that was pretty much the card. So thank you for joining me. And um, I hope that you will step over at the Create a Smile blog to see all of the other, um, you know, fun inspiration that the girls post there if you've never been. So thank you for joining me. Have a wonderful day.